Hey everyone, and welcome back. You know, it's funny, isn't it? We're always learning new things, picking up bits of information here and there, almost without even realizing it. It's true. So today, we're going deep on something we often take for granted. The idea of structured learning mm -hmm. is that traditional classroom model with its lectures and textbooks really still the best way to learn, especially in our crazy, fast-paced 21st century. Right. Let's find out, shall we? Let's do it. What I found really interesting about that article from Project Nomad, the one we're diving into today, is how it tackles this whole debate. They make a pretty strong case that, well, the traditional model might be getting a little, shall we say, outdated. Yeah, and what's fascinating is this isn't even a new debate, right? Like, uh -huh. this has been going on for a while. Exactly, exactly. But they lay out some pretty compelling arguments about why it might be time for a change. Okay, so for those of us who might not be totally up on the latest education lingo, how does the article define structured learning? What are we even talking about here? Sure, so they describe it as that classic classroom setup. You know, rigid schedules, lectures, textbooks, standardized tests. The whole nine yards. The whole shebang. Oh. And their main criticism is that this system feels very much like it was built for a different era, almost like it was designed for the industrial era. Ah, okay. So like back when we were churning out factory workers. Exactly. A time when the goal was to produce workers with a very standardized set of skills, almost like factory output. Yeah, I guess individualized learning experiences weren't exactly high on the priority list back then. Not so much. Yeah. But think about how much the world has changed since then, right? Oh my gosh, right. We're bombarded with information from every direction now. And the article really highlights that, like how much information we access daily that's outside that traditional classroom setting. Totally. And that wasn't even possible back in the industrial era. Right. So it's like, why are we still using an educational model that was designed for a world that doesn't even exist anymore? Yeah, it makes you think. Back then, knowledge was centralized. Mm. It was held within those textbooks, within yeah. those classrooms. Now, it's everywhere. It's a click away. It's true. I can't even tell you how many times a day I turn to Google or YouTube to learn something new. It's constant. Mm -hmm. And even the way we learn is different, right? Like, it's not about memorizing facts and figures anymore. It's more about being able to think critically, to solve problems, to adapt to new information constantly. Right. And those aren't really skills you can glean from just reading a textbook, are they? Not really, no. Yeah. And that's a key point the article makes, is that this really rigid kind of one-size-fits-all approach. Mm-hmm. It just can't keep up with how we learn and work today. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not as effective as it maybe once was. So if this traditional model of structured learning is really struggling to keep pace, what do we do about it? Like, what are the alternatives? Right, because we can't just, like, throw the baby out with the bathwater. It... Luckily, the article dives into some pretty interesting alternatives. And I think it's worth noting that these aren't necessarily, like, radical new ideas that they're suggesting. They draw inspiration from some educational practices that have actually been around for a while. Okay, interesting. But maybe haven't been as widely adopted as they could be. Okay, I'm intrigued. So tell me more. What are some of these alternative approaches? Well, one of the big ones they highlight is this idea of project-based learning. Okay, project-based learning. So what is that exactly? So it's all about active learning, you know, getting your hands dirty, so to speak. Instead of just reading about a concept in a textbook, students actually get to engage in hands-on projects Okay. that have real-world relevance. I love that. Yeah, so it's like the ultimate learning-by-doing approach. I can see how that would be so much more engaging for students. Do you have an example of what this might look like in practice? Like, how do you actually apply this? Absolutely. So imagine, instead of just reading about ecosystems in a textbook, students actually design and build a school garden. Oh, I love that. Right. So they're learning about biology, environmental science, even project management. Yeah, yeah. But they're doing it in this really tangible, impactful, and dare I say, fun way. Absolutely. And memorable. Like, I still remember those hands-on projects from school. Exactly. It yeah. sticks with you. Okay, so project-based learning, that's one. What about some of the other alternatives the article mentioned? Because I know personalized learning was another one that really caught my eye. Yeah, and this one really recognizes that we all learn differently, right? Totally. And we learn at our own pace. 100%. So personalized learning is really about tailoring education to those individual needs and preferences. You feel seen. Right. So maybe some learners, they thrive in like a self-directed online environment. Yes. Whereas others... 
they need more hands-on guidance. Yeah. Or they might really benefit from like a mentorship program. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Right. So it's about finding that right blend of resources and support for each individual student. I love that. So instead of having this one-size-fits-all curriculum, it's about creating a more customized learning journey. Exactly. I love that. I know for me, I learn best when I can really dive into a topic that genuinely interests me and I can go at my own pace. I'm curious, what about you? Like what kind of learning environment do you really thrive in? I'm very similar. I really enjoy that freedom to explore things that I'm interested in at my own pace to really kind of dive deep into those things that I find fascinating. Yes. And that's the beauty of personalized learning is it recognizes that there isn't one right way to learn. Totally, totally. Okay. And last but not least, the article also mentioned gamification, which, you know, on the surface sounds kind of like, are we just letting kids play video games all day? Right. I can see why you might well, think that. Yeah, yeah. But it's not about replacing traditional learning with like endless hours of Fortnite. Okay, good. It's really about taking those elements that make games so captivating. Things like challenges, rewards, collaboration, those interactive simulations, and figuring out how to integrate those strategically into the learning process. Interesting. Right. So it's like we all know that as humans, we're kind of wired to learn through play, right? Totally. Like I think about when I was a kid and I used to spend hours playing those educational computer games yes. and not even realizing that I was actually learning stuff. Right. It was just fun. And that's exactly what gamification is all about, right? It's leveraging that natural innate motivation and making learning feel more engaging, more rewarding. I love that. And what's cool is that it can be applied to pretty much any subject, history, science, math, language arts, you name it. So, okay, we've explored some really compelling alternatives to traditional structured learning. We talked about project-based learning, personalized approaches, even gamification. Right. Honestly, it's all super intriguing. Yep. But I think the big question is, you know, is it time to just completely ditch structured learning as we know it? Like, is that the answer? That is the million dollar question, isn't yeah. it? Right. And to be honest, I don't think it's about, you know, going to one extreme or the other. Yeah. Like, I don't think it has to be all or nothing. OK. In fact, the article even acknowledges that, like, some learners, they actually thrive in a more structured environment. Sure. And there's definitely value in having some kind of framework for learning. Right. Like, we're not saying just complete chaos. No, no, totally. Structure is good. Right. Exactly. It's all about finding that balance. Yeah. And I think that's the key takeaway here is recognizing that, OK, education it needs to evolve. It needs to evolve to meet the demands of, you know, the world we live in today, the uh, 21st century. Right. And maybe instead of viewing structured learning and these alternative approaches as being like at odds with each other, yep. maybe it's about figuring out how can we integrate them? How can we kind of take the best of both worlds and create this more dynamic and engaging experience for learners? I love that. So it's not structured or alternative. It's how can we take the best of both to really like empower learners? Precisely. And recognizing that, you know, education isn't this static one size fits all system. Mm. It's an ongoing process. Yes. It's about discovery. It's about adaptation. Absolutely. And I think the more that we can empower learners to take ownership of that process. Yes. The more effective it's going to be. And honestly, the more fulfilling it's going to be for everyone involved. A hundred percent. This has been such a thought provoking deep dive. I feel like we've really unpacked some of those limitations of traditional structured learning. We looked at its history, where it came from, why it was designed the way it was. Mm -hmm. But then we also got to dive into some really innovative alternatives. Yeah, for sure. And I think the biggest takeaway for me is just this reminder that, you know, learning it doesn't have to be confined to a classroom. It doesn't have to be confined to a textbook. Right. It really is this lifelong journey. It's about exploration. It's about discovery. Absolutely. And that journey, it's going to look different for everyone. Exactly. So as we wrap up here, a final thought for you to kind of ponder as you go about your day. What if we all approached learning with the spirit of curiosity and experimentation? You know, like, what if we were constantly seeking out new ways to grow, new ways to challenge ourselves? What might that unlock for you? That's all the time we have for today, but keep that question in mind and keep exploring those possibilities. Until next time, happy learning.